All right, this is Ron Wilkie, a cybersecurity quarterback. So uh, I got asked to do a presentation about doing penetration testing and remote penetration st testing with a command center in a different location. So I chose to use the Raspberry Pi 3 to test this out. Um, so the use case for this is if you have a data center in a different location than where you're located and you don't want to put together a, a new machine or a real, you know, big laptop and or you don't want to spend money for traveling hotel, you can just send this device once it's configured properly, connected to the network and have it send information to you um, via a reverse SSH um, TCP application or configuration. So um, just to let you know, just in case you don't know what's going on with this Raspberry Pi, because it is a pretty cool device, this is the three, this is the one. So I'll basically be showing you um, some of the mistakes I made. I got the one. Uh, it didn't really do what I needed it to do. And um, this is the three, so you can see what it comes with. This is it. This is your computer. Um, so you notice you don't have a keyboard. You don't have a monitor. Uh, you don't have a mouse. But you have four USB ports. So I use, uh, this is my little Bluetooth, right? And so I use this little bitty keyboard. Or you can use, you know, another Bluetooth, right? And use a bit keyboard. This one right here. All right, so and mouse. So, uh, you know, so that's something you have to take into account. Um, actually, you also don't have a monitor, like I said, so you can use this HDMI port right there, the HDMI port. Sorry, it's out of focus. Um, or you can uh, and connect it to your TV, or you can use this screen. I bought this screen. Uh, it works okay, but I wouldn't buy it again. All right, I also have this little screen, all right, to plug it up to. But again, I'd rather just use a TV. So I actually bought a TV to connect to my um, system, to my Raspberry Pi, so I could actually do the programming. So the first thing you need to do, um, oh, you yeah, also, I bought this antenna. It works okay, you know, for Wi-Fi um, activities. But if you're uh, used to doing Kali Linux and hacking, you know these alpha antennas are, alpha cards are like awesome. So that's better to use. And let's see what else uh, to help you. I have a case here and it looks so much more sleek in a case, but just so that you can see what's going on with it. Um, again, it's part of the case. I took it out of the case so you could see all the aspects of it. It actually comes with an HD, I mean with a Wi-Fi card, but it's not as strong as the uh, the ones I've shown you. So anyway, uh, we'll plug all this stuff up and then we'll go ahead and um, install the right operating system, which is the Kali Linux ARM. And we'll do that now. All right, so now let's actually talk about installing Kali Linux onto your Raspberry Pi device. This is why you're looking at the video, right? Okay, let's do it. What you want to do is go to Kali.org, Kali right? And then go to Downloads. And when you go to Downloads, you want to make sure you download the right image. You can't download the regular image because the Raspberry Pi is not strong enough to run the Ragley Kali image. It can run a lot of different things, though. And you can do a lot of different projects with the Raspberry Pi 3. But um, you want to get the ARM version, A-R-M. And you see Kali ARM images. You see that right here? Bam! Click on that. And you can see the different operating systems that they've created this ARM image in order to use uh, to do penetration testing. Look at all of these different um, devices. I actually didn't know this um, until I started working on the Raspberry Pi 3 device. So they have a lot of different devices and each one will work with that particular um, image for that device. So you see a lot of different devices that look like the Raspberry Pi 3, but the Raspberry Pi uh, foundation or company, they are everywhere. I mean, there are people doing projects with it, so it's very well supported. There are many people doing a lot of different projects with them, so it's very well supported, so I recommend Raspberry Pi, especially the third version now. So you can see here, it says Raspberry Pi 2.3. Version 2.12, I will let you know that early, the earlier versions didn't work on 3. I ran into a lot of complications, but this latest version, SHA-1, some, this particular version, actually does run on 3, and I'll show you that. So you want to download this, 
right? And once you finish downloading, you want to create an install uh, micro SD boot disk. And I'll show you how to do that. So let's say you clicked on it and you've downloaded it. Now you want to uh, create a boot disk. You want to run Win Disk Win32 Disk Imager. That's what you want to do. This is the way it's always been done. Um, and you want to find the file. So first you click here. You can see I already have it loaded, but um, you want to uh, pick which one you want to run. So we'll pick this one. I believe this is the same one that I just showed you. Let me check. Uh, 2.12. That's 2.12. That's a, Let me see something. Yeah. All right. Now let me go back. Okay. So it's actually this one. So you want to take this and open. And now you can see it is right here. And you want to say right. So I click on right. Actually, you want to continue. Yes. So now it's writing. So now let's pretend as if I mean, I mean I've already done it. So once it's done, you can then put the micro SD into your um, Raspberry Pi 3 and run it like a regular computer. Now you're probably saying, wait a second, micro SD, micro, micro. How do I get it on a micro SD card? So what you should have, uh, well, what you could have. On my computer, I actually have, you know, a slot that runs these types of cards. And I don't have it here, but you would take your micro SD card and you would basically put it um, inside of, of an adapter and put it in your computer. All right. And you can see once I put the device in, you see it pops up right here. Now it says I need to format because remember we just started writing on it. So it's going to usually tell you that if you used the disk before. So say format and it'll go ahead and do that. See all of this stuff going on. Um, start, do a quick format. And I'm kind of getting into the weeds of that. You really don't have to worry about all this. I mean, this is just standard stuff. You should know about formatting your disk. Then you want to write it. And then once you do that, your Raspberry Pi 3 will be ready to go. All right, let's go ahead and turn it on.